Small battery, low range, slow charge, expensive. That was the old Mini Electric, but this new model is looking to fix all those complaints that we had with the whole generation. Does it deliver? Let's find out. See, when the sun comes out like this in England, you have to take full advantage of it and have a picnic like this. But speaking of British though, this car is a true British icon. But in terms of design, is this a Lamini? Well, to start with, on the front we have the circular LED light, so this is the daylight running light, and you can also have the light signature as well that we've come to know about the new Minis as well. And then when we move further down, we have a typical Mini logo here, although this is a John Cooper Works version, so this is blacked out. You have the octagonal uh, frame on the front for the grille. Looks absolutely fantastic as well. You can see some of the radar system and the camera there as well. I love how low this is to the ground to give you that sporty look. I think the front definitely looks like a Mini. On the side, it looks very simplistic in terms of the design. It's minimalist rather than simplistic and it's very streamlined. So we have this flush door handle here, which helps with the drag coefficient. It's just very slick and smooth. We don't get the uh, black cladding in terms of the arches, wheel arches on there. You've got short uh, front and back overhangs. You've got your charge port here, which supports DC charging up to 95 kilowatts. Uh, DC charging and then we look at the rims as well so this is John Cooper Works version like I was saying so we get this nice design in terms of the wheels we've got the John Cooper Works brake uh, calipers there as well it just looks very sporty and fantastic if you go for the John Cooper Works again you do get this red um, cap on the wing mirrors and the red roof top as well and then depending on what level of trim you go for you also get the sunroof included in that as well we'll talk about that uh, once we start talking more about what level you should get which versions are available and stuff like that over on the back though is where things look just a tad bit different i mean look at it what do you guys think in the comments we have this triangular tail lights here so we've got the union jack because you know true british icon we've got the back window uh, wiper there which is great i'm glad they included that we've got the black tap badge there as well we've got the spoiler there as well it's got john cooper works written on the side so it just looks sharper it looks a bit slimmer as well and i love the diffuser on the bottom as well i think it looks very sporty in terms of whether it looks like a mini though I'm not sure I'm convinced. For the Mini Cooper Electric, which and I've been calling it Mini Electric, it's actually called Mini Cooper, and we have the S and the SE. This is the SE version, but I digress. When it comes to the practicality here, this is not its strong suit, because if you want something that's more practical, there's a Countryman, which you can always get, but if you stick it to this one, you're only gonna get this small boot space. I'll leave all number on the screen, but this is tiny. I can just about fit the tripod to picnic that I was eating earlier, and a couple of more equipments there. And before I forget, that pattern on the front with the light signature, that also works on the back as well. So for the new Mini Cooper, we have the E and the SE, with the E starting from £30,000 and the SE starting from £34,500. The SE will give you a lot more for your money, so I'll probably go for that one. In terms of trim levels, we have Classic, Exclusive and Sport. And as always, you can choose between the levels that you want. And of course, let's not forget the John Cooper Works version, which is this one in this video. In terms of level options, if you go up to level three, it gives you level one and level two. With level three, you get panoramic glass sky roof. You get your folding wing mirrors with auto dimming. You get the adaptive LED headlights. You got the interior mirrors, mini head up display, Harman Kardon surround sound system, and a bit more. This particular version here on the road, with all the extras and packages and optional equipment, you're looking at 42,400. £170. So the Mini Cooper Electric E will give you 40.7 kilowatt hour battery and the SE will give you 54.2 kilowatt hour battery. So if you go for the SE, like I said, it gives you a bit more, for example, a bigger battery, which means longer range. It doesn't stop there though. The Mini Cooper Electric E will give you 290 newton meters of torque, 7.3 seconds for the 0 to 62 figures. And as for the range on the WLTP, it's 190 miles. The Mini Cooper Electric E will give you 184 horsepower versus 218 horsepower on the SE. For the acceleration, you're looking at 0 to 62 in 7.3 seconds for the E and 6.7 seconds for the SE. The SE will also give you better torque, so 330 newton meters of torque versus 290 on the standard E. As for the top speed, it's 99 miles per hour for the Mini Cooper Electric E and 106 for the SE. And for the range, 190 miles for the E and 250 miles for the SE. With all that said, is the price of Mini enough for your bank account? And as for the interior, does it still give us that mini vibe? Starting with the back, it's very tiny here. Someone like me, Fight for 11, it's probably not where I'd sit for a long journey. Luckily, we've got some roof here that gives us a sense of space sitting at the back. For the seating configuration, it's a 60-40 split. At least the material in here is very plush and it feels premium. Even though it's a leatherette material, it's not real leather, nothing like that in the car. It's all about sustainability. We get a couple of little storage area here where you can perhaps put your phone so it doesn't drop somewhere else. There's a little tray here, transmission tunnels there as well, uh, unluckily 
that shouldn't have been there, I don't think. But that holds your bottle if you need to pull a bottle there. And generally, I think it feels premium. It's just a shame about the space. Also, getting out, it's not the most flattering or the easiest. What's very mini though is some of the classic look in here. So, I mean, we have this round display. It's now OLED, which is the world's first in a car. We have the toggle bars here as well. And what I also love is the material that's used in here. We have this textile finish in two color tones. If you opt for the uh, head up display, we have head up display in front of us for more information. They flattened the uh, air vents here but sit behind the steering wheel, for example, just to give it this nice elongated look and spacious feeling on the front. It's definitely spacious out here on the front. And I love the seat as well. The John Cooper works finishing all around the car, like on the steering uh, for example we even have this pull tab all around the car that gives it a nice stylish look it's on uh, the, the seat as well to open the seat uh, what well, to move the seat we even get this armrest but unfortunately it's in the way of this little cubby hole here so it kind of just not well thought through in that area and you can't seem to move this and place it somewhere else unfortunately we did get two cup holders here though and they're actually quite big and also our pressed water bottle actually fits in there for once, but what doesn't fit though, or sit well, is if you get a smaller can like this and you put it in there, can you hear that? It's gonna rattle all the way through your journey. We do get a wireless charging area here. So if you have a compatible device like my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra here, you can just place it here securely and the rubber mat will keep you nicely secured in place. It's not cooled, unfortunately, but we do get two USB-C charge, uh, charging ports here, which is great. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that kind of stuff. It's all here, but we'll go through all that as well because there's some cool stuff here in terms of the technology here. One thing that's worth mentioning is this new camera that's inside of the car as well. It's a selfie camera. So if you're on a journey with the kids or your friends or whatever it is, road trip, you can pull that on and just record yourself, capture some content and just be fun. And that's what Min is all about, just having fun and feeling very alive in the car. We have Harman Kardon sound system in here, which sounds absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best, better ones in any car that I've listened to. And this new operating system is OS9, which borrows some features or the underlying elements from Android and also BMW. So one thing that's fantastic about this is, this is OLED, which means you get deeper blacks, you get nicer color, it's richer, it's brighter. It just looks much better than what you'd see in any other cars out there. And it's very responsive as well. As you can see, you can just scroll across. I know the animations are quite slow here, but that's just part of the design and the way they've done it. They want it to be nice and flowy. You got your uh, spike personal assistant there as well. The top half will always show you the important information like your range and what drive position you're in and stuff like that. So all that information is opt up and the middle bit is where it's all dynamic. You can change it and do different things. You got your climate control there, which means you can turn it on and off. It's currently off for, you know, for sound's sake. And if we press this multiple dots, which is basically your main menu to see all the, all the rest of the icons. So you can scroll up and down. As you can see there, we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Assisted View. We also have gaming in here, which we won't go through because that's not particularly new, but it's something that you can do on here. One thing I love is the way they've sort of put them in segments. So you have all of it, you've got infotainment stuff, you've got vehicle related things recently used, mini connected as well as so you can connect your phones. For example, on your phone with a mini app, you can also share keys. So you have digital key, which you can share with up to 10 people if you'd like. So if we go to all of it, so that makes it easy to see everything. You have mini ID, you have your spike personal assistant, you have your air console games. And if we scroll down here, we have things like your drive recorder. So like I said, you can record your journey, for example, with people in the car, but it's not just for that though. So if we tap this, at the moment, there's no recorder available, so we won't go through that. But what I wanted to show you though, if, it's, if you go in settings, it's not just about recording yourself. It's also used for things like accidents and you also got things like theft as well. So it's good to record those things. And the re recording length in this is up to 40 seconds. So that's something else to also bear in mind. And then you can export the data and you can also access it via your mini app as well. So do download that, connect it to your phone, I mean, connect it to your car and you'll be able to access uh, those recordings. If I go further down, you can change things like your exterior lighting, which we talked about in terms of the light signature. So for example, we have the classic round one, we have the favored one here, then we have John Cooper Works uh, design there. So you can go through all that and select whatever tickles your fancy, you can do those things. So uh, those are the couple of things I wanted to show you there. Everything else is pretty much standard stuff that we've seen before. You have plenty of safety equipment as well. You can control the seats and all that kind of stuff. You can watch videos in here as well. So whilst you're charging, uh, you can basically just, you know, watch a film or something like that. Below the display are your toggle bars, but what's really cool here is the way this start stop button is. It basically switches that way. So it feels like a key that's permanently there. So you can just turn it to start the engine and turn it the other way to stop it. And then you've got your drive selector there and parking button there, volume control there. 
What's cool here is the experiences. Again, if you've seen one of our new mini car uh, videos, you would have seen this before. So if we press this, it means we can change from core to green, to vivid, to timeless, to personal, and balance as well. So it changes all these little things that you can do in here. There's also go-kart mode as well. So especially it gives you like some sound effect and all that kind of stuff. So let me, let's go to go-kart mode. I can show you what that looks like. It loads up and you hear that weird sound <laughs> that just makes you feel like you're on high octane or something. So the whole, the whole experience changes in terms of the interface and everything to go with exactly what that is. But the cool part is if you download the app as well, you can then go into personal. Personal means you can then select your own photos, you can personalize it and add, you get that sound as well. So you can add photos on there, for example, so you can change what that looks like and personalize it. I particularly like this one. So if we just press confirm, that's not changed to what you want it to be. But like I said, you can also upload a family photo or something like that. You can do that as well. So that's basically that in a nutshell. Right, let's cut to the chase. Let's get some numbers out of the way. We have 218 HP here, so horsepower. Uh, zero to 62 in 6.7 seconds, 330 Newton meters of torque, and 106 miles per hour top speed. So it's faster, more powerful, more torque than the standard uh, S version. So if you go for the SC and then this is John Cooper works, so you get all the power, all the speed that you need in a compact little car like this one. So is it fun to drive? A lot of fun. In fact, when you put your foot down in this and put it, you put it into go-kart uh, go uh, experience mode on here, you get a slightly better feeling in terms of the throttle response, the way the steering is more direct and sharpness as well. The chassis is kind of stiff as well, so if you get less bounce, bounce as you're driving and stuff like that. And the body roll is so minimal and it's very nimble as well. So you can just, uh, you know, doing the cornering around here. It's so much fun. The brakes are very sharp as well. So it fills you with confidence in terms of if you speed up and you need to brake very quickly, slam the brake, tap it very responsive there's no issues there at all so whether you are driving down this country lane sides or you run uh dual carriageways or whatever it is you're driving on it's very much designed to handle all those terrains and it's still comfortable though even though with the stiff chassis it's still pretty much a very comfortable car to drive as for driving over potholes oh my god it's not that forgiving because you can feel every tiny little bump on all these roads here that needs repairing so if you're worried about if you drive or live somewhere where you get a lot of potholes, you are gonna be in for a treat because it's not the most favorable in that area. I love the directness of the steering. The steering ratio is just perfect for me. It's nicely weighted, so it doesn't feel too soft. It doesn't feel too heavy. I think it's just bang on exactly where I would like my steering feeling to be. Uh, so is there anything that I don't like about the car? Mm, not really. I think they've done very well to make it very balanced in terms of the speed that you can do in this. I think anyone who gets this car would love the way that it just responds, it responds to the way that you drive. And it fills you with confidence as well, so you don't have to worry about doing corners like I'm doing this bend here, and it's just really nice. And if you put it to go car, like I said, your traction control, the time it takes for it to kick in and stuff like that is less compared to when you don't have it on. On the WLTP range, they say this will do 250 miles, but I think in reality, we're gonna be getting around maybe 200 miles. Uh, it's hard to tell just on this, quick uh, couple of hours time you know couple of hours drive time with the car on this press launches so it's something i have to test if i happen to get a long term or have it for longer at a later date but i think 200 miles is still pretty decent for urban use because this has got a bigger battery it's got better range than before so some of the questions we asked at the start is whether it's still pretty much a mini in terms of as, as this solves some of those complaints we had, yes, it's got a bigger battery now, slightly longer range, faster charge now. Pricing is still something that most people will probably still question and still complain about. I think the pricing still needs work uh, in this day and age. I think everyone's asking for a small EV like this one, but cost, well, that's more affordable. Um, but it just depends, it's your money. <laughs> so what's affordable to you might not be something that's affordable to me, but in the grand scheme of things though, I think it could be cheaper uh, for this kind of vehicle. But you do get what you're paying for though, you get a lot of premium quality here, reliability, loads of tech in here, including that 360 camera that you get, uh, selfie camera that you get inside the car, so that's pretty cool as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Is this still a mini? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.